This is Phil Mir. What we've got in front of us here is a marvel of Victorian engineering. You've got to understand that this is, what, 120 years and older, and it's still as important today as it was all that time ago. But it is really testament to the Victorian engineers, the foresight that these chaps had to construct something on this sort of scale. Manchester had commissioned a consulting engineer to quench the thirst of the Industrial Revolution. They were going to look for 50 million gallons of water, which we were going to need for the population and to keep the industry with the water it needed. So they needed somewhere with a lot of rainfall, and the Lake District was an obvious area. However, there was great environmental concerns brought up at the time, and we had the formation of the Thilmere Defence Association which would be an absolute thorn in the side to Manchester because their mission was to protect the beautiful valley of Thilmere. So after much debate and 19 parliamentary sessions, Queen Victoria finally gave the royal assent the scheme would need. So the Manchester consulting engineers could start to build the dam, which they started in 1890. They would need a dam that would raise the original lake by 56 feet, which would give them the 50 million gallons of water that they were looking for every day. So you've built a dam over 56 feet high. That then allows you to flood a reservoir behind it, which holds all the water that Manchester needs to get. Now, the problem with Manchester is it's 100 miles away and you need an aqueduct to be able to get it down there. And that was an equal feat of engineering uh, as compared with the dam in the reservoir. So over there, we have the start of the aqueduct at the valve tower. Now, that was only start of a a major engineering challenge. The actual reservoir would take water, you know, 60 feet below ground level. And when you look south, they've got a massive engineering challenge that there's a huge hill uh, of Dumbell Rays that they're gonna have to get under. So they started tunneling away through the very, very hard Lake District rock, built a tunnel big enough to drive a small car through, but it would take them four years to complete that tunnel from end to end. Major engineering challenge. One of the most amazing features of the aqueduct was that it had to get the water from Thirlmere all the way over 100 miles to Manchester by gravity alone. And if you put all these tunnels end to end, you'd have 14 miles. Now, on occasion, the aqueduct just shows itself out of the tunnels. And this is a classic example of it. And we don't see the aqueduct very often, but here we are at Greenhead Gill, where the level of the stream is below the level of the tunnels. So they've no choice but to build a little masonry bridge to carry it directly into the next tunnel, where it continues its gentle one in 3,000 fall in terms of the gradient to Manchester. So the aqueduct miners would leave their accommodation, their digs down in the village. They'd walk to work up the side of ravines on very steep paths, and then they would be faced with a 12-hour shift they would be hewing the hard Lake District rock for 12 hours. Or they would probably only advance the tunnels about three metres in a whole shift. And they'd only get paid 12 shillings for the pleasure. So extremely hard work and we've a lot to thank these people for today. One of the amazing features of the aqueduct is that it had to get the water all the way to Manchester under gravity. And it's going to cross 28 valleys along its 100 mile route. So they're going to have to get water to flow uphill. How on earth would they do that? Well, they have what they call inverted siphons. And it shows itself where it crosses the river, which is usually at the bottom of the valley. And here we have the example of the deepest valley of the whole aqueduct with the Loon Bridge with four huge pipes carrying the full capacity of the aqueduct as it heads south down to Manchester. It's a fantastic feat of Victorian engineering that's over 120 years old. So here we are, over 40 miles away from Thirlmere. It's taken nearly a day to get here. And then it continues its journey all the way south to Manchester. It'd be originally 92 miles long. 
So on the 13th of October 1894, these pipes had been filled for the first time and the water issued forth at a commemorative fountain in Albert Square that had been built specially for the occasion. And that would mean the first sweet waters of Thirlmere arrived to help quench the thirst of the Industrial Revolution in Manchester. A monumental achievement.